Hey everyone, this is Yami, your Latina next door. Welcome back to my channel. Today is a Dollar Tree mystery box challenge and I cannot wait to share what it's all about. So in this Dollar Tree mystery box challenge, there are seven other very talented ladies participating. My friend Courtney over at Creative on the Cheap came up with this idea. Basically what we were supposed to do, we were supposed to go to Dollar Tree and buy seven to 10 items from Dollar Tree. And two of those items had to be challenge items, something that would be a little bit difficult to make a DIY out of. And what we were supposed to do, we were supposed to pack it up in a box and mail it to our assigned person. And they have no idea what they got. So I mailed one off to my person and I got one from somebody else. So what we're supposed to do is unbox it on a video so that you guys can capture our first impressions and see what we get at the same time that we open it up. And then we are supposed to make DIYs out of them. So I have my box here and I got my box from Jennifer over at A Little Bit of Calm and Crazy. This woman has so much energy and does so many beautiful things on her channel. She loves Dollar Tree and Farmhouse and she's so good at what she does. So don't forget to check out what she creates for this challenge. And I cannot wait to see what's in it, all right? I opened it up, but I haven't looked inside. So let's dig in. All right, so here's the box. It's huge. All this packaging. Okay, all right, so we got first item. We got was pearls. But you know what's so funny? I never find these at my Dollar Tree, so. Okay, exciting. I've got white and blue ribbon. She must know I like the coastal look. Oh, more pearls. That's a lot of pearls. <laughs> okay, I got one um, pot, plant pot container, color blue. So that's nice. I like the colors here. All right, so we got, oh, there's a little note. It says, Yami, I can't wait to see what you craft, you always create amazing things. Love, Jennifer. That was so sweet. Okay. All right. All right, so we got these little trays. I don't know if you guys have seen these, but these are in the craft section at Dollar Tree. So I got one that's a little bit higher like that and one that's a little bit flatter. All right, and we have this cute little, it's like an arrow, but it looks like a house, doesn't it? Only open if you dare. So the mystery items were supposed to be wrapped individually like this so that we would know what the challenge items were. But here's the thing. <laughs> I pulled this up and um, underneath it was this. And I was hoping I wouldn't get any of these. <laughs> this could have very well have been a challenge item for me, Jennifer, because yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Let's go ahead and find out what the challenge items are. All right. So let's see what's in here. <laughs> oh, this isn't bad. Have a nice, this isn't it. I was scared. Okay, seriously, I was scared. Oh, this is actually kind of cute. Man, you made all my stuff coordinate. Okay, so we have a very tangled <laughs> little wind chime. So, here we go. All right, so for the very first DIY, we are going to be using this little arrow, and the first thing we're going to do is remove that little jute string, as well as those staples in the back. Next thing, we're going to pull out those crafting shears. I talked about these in my last DIY video where I shared three spring DIYs, and the great thing about this is, is that you can change the angle of which it cuts. So I can make any kind of angle cuts and here I am making 45 degree angle cuts. And look at how that thing slices. I love this thing. If you guys wanna check it out, I'll leave a link in the description box below. So you might've guessed it, I'm making this into a little house and I am gonna make a little roof for this. So after I made the cuts, I took some of my antiquing wax, I use this all the time, and I mixed it with a little bit of water, and all you do is apply it with a brush and wipe off the excess with a paper towel, and it looks just like as if you would stain it. I'll leave this product also in the description box below if you wanna check it out. We are going to be using this throughout the entire video. 
So while that's drying, I'm gonna take some of my home decor white chalk paint and give this one nice coat, making sure that I also get the edges. And then after that was dry, I adhered the little dowels with some hot glue. And then I took some washi tape and put it on the bottom to create a door. Then I took some Apple Barrel black paint and just applied one coat. So I had recently bought this sign at Dollar Tree and I'm gonna use it for this. And I also had this embroidery hoop on hand. You guys know I have these. I used it on my last DIY video. So this is gonna go together. And for the sign, I'm gonna use the back side. All right, so I'm gonna take my antiquing wax again, all watered down, and I am gonna do the same thing to this and just give it one coat. And so while that's drying, I am going to apply Mod Podge all over the large sign. I'm gonna adhere this scrapbook paper that I got from Hobby Lobby a while ago. Excuse my arm, I did not know it was in the way. And whenever I do a large sign where I'm Mod Podging it, what I like to do is take a roller to it to take out all the bubbles. And sometimes we get smudges on these things. So I picked this little eraser up in the craft section at Dollar Tree and it takes off smudges, glue, you name it, it is so good. So when that was dry, I cut off the edges. I started with the scissors and then I did a little bit finer cuts with the X-Acto knife. And I sanded off any rough or imperfect edges. Then I wiped it down and applied Mod Podge all over the top of it to seal it. Once that was dry, I took some E6000 and I adhered the embroidery hoop right on over it. I used a little bit of hot glue to keep it in place, but ultimately I did place something heavy on top of it so it could keep it down. Once that was dry, I took a little bit more E6000 and I adhered the little house onto the sign. And then I made this cute little decal that says home sweet casa. This decal will also be available once my online shop opens up and it's gonna be available in more than one size. Took some leftover greenery eucalyptus that I had bought previously from Walmart and I hot glued it to the top of the sign. And I also took some leftover roses that I had for my Valentine's decor and placed them in the center. Finally, I took some of those pearls that Jennifer sent me and I used the medium size for this. I strung them on some jute and I attached it to the back in order to hang it. And to hang it, I basically glue the jute string to the back of the sign and add a little bit of a popsicle stick in order to keep it in place. But then I realized that my beads were gonna slide down, so I took a little bit of the end of the popsicle stick and I adhered it to the very top so it wouldn't go down behind the sign. And that is it for this first DIY. I love the colors. I love how everything looks so good together. I love that little house. I think this is just perfect for spring. So who did I get to send my box to? Crafts by Caitlin. And if you don't know who that is, then you've been living under a rock. This girl has got an amazing channel with tons of videos and a whole lot of inspiration. So don't forget to click below and see what she creates. All right, time for DIY number two, and I'm gonna be using one of my challenge items. It's this little bag. So the first thing I needed to do was undo all of the sewing on the sides. For this, I will also be using that little gingham fabric that you see in the back. These are from Dollar Tree and I happen to have two of them. I bought them a while ago, didn't know what to do with it, but I'm gonna be using it with this project. After that was completely separated, I cut straight through the bottom fold. I lined the gingham fabric alongside the little bag side and I made sure to cut an exact 
piece. I made sure to include the seam allowance from the actual bag as well because I'll need every inch I can get. I'm going to go ahead and fold over and stitch the top hem of the little gingham piece, the one that's going to match with the top part of what used to be the bag. Then I place the bag and the gingham fabric right sides in. I pinned all three sides except for the top part where the handles were and I sewed all three sides together. Now when sewing the sides, I did not go all the way to the top edge because I needed to put the two ends together. And this was actually the first time I ever did this, but you're supposed to fold them over and then stitch them up. I think I did okay. <laughs> next, next, I pulled on the two handles and I cut them evenly and I stitch up those ends so that they wouldn't fray. And then I took some of the blue ribbon that Jennifer sent me and I added them onto the gingham side of the little case and I basically cut it and made it match to the location to where the other two straps were originally on the bag. Finally, I put a couple of pillows in them and I have brand new covered pillows for my little swing chair for my kids. A lot of you have asked me where I got this little chair. This chair actually used to be mine when I was little. This is over 30 years old. My parents bought it for me when we were living in Germany and it has lasted through the years. Now my kids get to enjoy it. And I used the ribbon and the old straps in order to tie the little cushions onto the chair, both on the bottom and the top. I love how these came out and how versatile and washable they are. All right, so onto these bad boys. Just kidding, I don't know what to do with these yet. All right, so we're here with this cute little crate that I am going to paint with my white chalk paint, that same one that I used earlier on the little house. This will only need one coat, but I wanna make sure I get all of the top edges and inside of the little handles. All right, so once that's dry, you're gonna take some popsicle sticks so you can get these jumbo ones at Dollar Tree. I already had some left over from another project and I'm gonna get those shears and I'm gonna cut them down to fit the ends of the box and I'm gonna cover those corners. Cut a total of eight popsicle sticks. I sanded the edges to get anything rough or any splinters off and I gave them a coat of again that antique wax that's watered down and I used it as a stain for these. Once they were dry I took some hot glue and glued them onto the corners. Next, I had a piece of floral foam that I had left over from a previous project and I went ahead and inserted it. I also added some green moss that I had, making sure to glue it onto the sides so that if you look through the handles, you wouldn't see any of the foam. And I added more moss to the top. I decided to use this lavender brush that I bought from Walmart. These only cost 97 cents and I think they look better than Dollar Trees. And I cut it apart and just inserted the different lavender little sprigs throughout the base. I added a little bit more moss to hide some bald spots and that was it. And this is the finished product. Even though this is a little bit on the smaller side, it goes perfectly on a shelf or you can take it to your office and spruce it up a bit. Okay, so it's time to tackle my second challenge item, these wind chimes. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is remove all of the strings and take everything apart. 
For this DIY, I'm gonna use that round piece. And I'm gonna take another piece of scrapbook paper that I have, I am loving these lines, and I am gonna trace all around it and cut two circles. I am gonna apply Mod Podge to both sides of this disc, and I am gonna apply those little circles. Once those two sides are dry, I come back and add another layer of Mod Podge. Next, I'm gonna add this little sad sprig. It belonged to one of my floral bushes that I had just taken everything off of, and I'm gonna go ahead and thread wooden beads that I had on hand onto it. And I'm gonna take some more of that watered down antique wax, you guessed it, and I am gonna stain all of them. Then I am gonna take the large beads that Jennifer sent me, and I am gonna thread both the pearls and the wooden beads together. On one end, I'm gonna attach that little circle. I'm gonna use the white ribbon that Jennifer sent me and add a cute little bow right above that little wooden circle. And for the other end, I'm gonna make myself a little tassel out of yarn. And that's it for this DIY. But wait, we cannot forget about that cute little teardrop that was on the wind chime. I added some antiquing wax to it. Then I took this little letter transfer that I got at Dollar Tree a while ago, and basically you just rub them on and they come right onto your crafts. They come in a large pack like this. Cut some poster board into a small rectangle and I took some more of that navy and white scrapbook paper and made a quick pattern on it. I cut two pieces out of that scrapbook paper, one for each side of that poster board. I took a glue stick and adhered the scrap of paper on both sides. took some clear contact paper that I had, cut it to twice its size, folded it in half, and then inserted the paper in between. After it was nice and adhered, I cut off the extra edges, and then I gave it a hole punch at the top. I strung the little teardrop through, left a little bit of room, so that I could add a little white bow to this as well. And I just made myself a cute little bookmark. Okay, so DIY number six, we are gonna take that little tray and you guessed it, we're gonna apply some antique wax to it as well. But this time we're gonna apply it on the bottom of the tray. We're gonna flip it over and get all of the underneath sides as well as the little borders and inside the stars. Next, I made a template with some poster board and I centered it in the center of the little box and I traced it out. I took a drill and then I made a hole in it. And some more. I took my saw from the mini miter kit that I have and I sawed the entire rectangle out.
Now you will get a little bit of your wood splitting on you and some split ends, so make sure you sand those down if you do try this. I touched up some of the areas that splintered and also the edges of where I cut and added a new layer of antiquing wax just to kind of make everything look nice and even. And in order to prevent any further splintering or anything, I did use a little bit of wax to seal the top and make sure it had a nice finish. This home decor wax is more liquidy. You just apply it with a brush and then remove the excess with a lint-free cloth. And believe it or not, I had some of that gingham fabric left over from my little pillowcases that I made earlier. I didn't have a lot left, so I cut two pieces in equal sizes and then I attached them together to make one long piece. And then I ran them through my sewing machine and made hems on both sides. Now if you've seen some of my previous sewing projects, you know I love little pleats. And so I decided to add little pleats to this as well. I could have made them a little bit more pronounced, but it's okay. Once the pleats were done, I sewed the two ends together, making sure that the final measurements align with the inside of that little tray. I had this little box of Velcro that I've had for years, and what I did was I cut it out to fit inside of the frame. I didn't need it as thick, so I cut it right down the middle, and I did this for the entire perimeter of the inside of the little box. Now the Velcro does have iron-on adhesive for fabric, but since I'm putting it inside of this little box, I went ahead and used my glue gun. Now I needed the other piece of Velcro for the fabric, and I measured the entire way around it. I cut it in half to make it thinner, and I didn't show this part, but I did iron it on, and you're supposed to iron it on on the outside of that fabric, and you want to do it on the top side where the pleats are. And then you're going to want to stick the Velcros together. Do you have any idea what I am making yet? If you paid attention to the thumbnail, you probably already do. Okay, this little skirt is just too stinking cute. That little tray fits right over those little square tissue boxes. Now when you add the fabric, it gets a little tight, but you can still squeeze it in there. And I have the cutest little farmhouse tissue box cover. Like, I think it's adorable. Well, it looks like it's me and these hooks, and I found the perfect solution for them. Do you know how hard it is to film in a tub? And yes, this is perfect to hang the Latino Engineers' loofah in the shower. There you go. So there you have it. $6 tree DIYs from my mystery box. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite DIY. Thank you so much to the ladies who invited me on this collab. In my description box, you will find who I gave my box to and what she got and what she created. So go ahead and check the link in my description box so you can hop on over to her channel to see what I got her and what she made. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was a fun collaboration for you guys. It was definitely a lot of fun for me. It is an honor to be among these amazing, talented ladies. And I cannot wait to see you guys in the next one. Until then, adios.